from a business community, a business family, and we know the business people most. The motivation, they have their own vocabulary. Suppose there is war or famine, consumer goods are scarce, prices start shooting up. In our language, commercial language, we say, market is improving. Market is improving. You get more price, more profit, whatever stock you got, you get it, bring more profit. Market is improving. No more famine, no more war, lot of consumer goods, market has gone down. And with a very sad heart, we say, oh, market is crushed. So bad, it's so bad. What attitude? What kind of motivation? We don't care whether people suffer or not, we must get our money. Oh, this one will not understand unless one starts observing the truth inside. One remains so much involved, so much involved in the madness, there is nothing wrong in doing business. One has to earn money, reasonably, without harming others. Provided one keeps on understanding that I am playing the role, an important role to serve the community in this particular way. One may be in any profession, but if one keeps on thinking that by this profession I am serving the society, and in return I get my remuneration from the society, then serving the society becomes more important. Remuneration will certainly come. Nothing wrong. A businessman buys from the manufacturer and, and distributes to the consumer. Nothing wrong in that. Every consumer cannot run to the manufacturer to buy his requirements. They must be a middleman. But this middle man, if he starts thinking that I am here to exploit and get money, then this rat race of money, money, money will make this person mad. Far away from Dhamma, far away from Dhamma. Samma Ajiva wants you to have a good volition, good motivation to earn money without harming others. Serving people, a member of the society, parts his or her own role to serve the society in the capacity that one can. All these three, Samma Vacha, Samma Kammanta, Samma Ajiva, right speech, right physical action, and right livelihood, they all come in the first part of Dhamma, Shiva, morality. If the teacher of Dhamma had only taught this, then he was not an enlightened person. Enlightened person will teach the totality of Dhamma, which is only partial Dhamma. Just to teach people and tell them, Oh, you people of the world, you should not do this, you should not do this, you should not do this, you do, should do this, you should do this, you should, should do this. People will hear from this ear and they go out of the other ear. It won't have any effect. Because one knows very well that I should not do this, I should not do this, and yet, one keeps on doing the same thing. A drunkard knows very well that it is not good for him. And it's come out of your addiction. It's so bad. A gambler knows very well, I should not do this. And yet when the time comes, he forgets everything. He drinks, he gambles. Why? Because he has no control over the mind. He has no mastery over the mind. He's slave of his own mind. He's slave of his own behavior pattern deep inside. Dhamma is not complete just to do sermons like this, just to talk of Sheila doesn't help. So the next step, Samadhi, mastery of the mind. You have to learn how to become master of your own mind. You have to learn how to concentrate your mind. And concentrate your mind with the wholesome way. Kusal chittasya ekagata. The concentration of mind with the base of spirit. This is Samadhi. Another three parts of Dhamma come under this division of Samadhi. Samma Vayamu, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi, Samma Vayamu. Right type of a force, right type of exercise. You will take some exercise. When your body is weak, when your body is sick, unhealthy, so weak that you can't take even three steps, you keep on dangling here, dangling there, somebody will ask you, advise you, take this exercise, this exercise, 
make your muscles strong, make your body strong. Similarly, when the mind becomes clear, and all of you have noticed two days, working two days, what a sick mind you are carrying. What a weak mind you are carrying. Dangling here, dangling there. So infirm, so unstable. You have to do some exercise to make it stable, firm, strong, healthy, sound. Any exercise which makes your mind healthy is a good exercise. This is Samma Vayamu. There are four exercises. In Dhamma, every exercise is examine yourself. First exercise, examine yourself. Oh, even at the surface level of the mind, at present I have got this voice, that voice, this voice, this voice. Get rid of them. Get rid of the voices which are there. First good exercise. Second exercise, again examine your mind. My mind does not carry this particular voice or this particular voice. Close all the doors of your mind. Whatever impurity is not there, don't allow it to come. Second good exercise. Third good exercise, again examine your mind. My mind has this particular virtue, that particular virtue. Don't develop ego because of that. Don't develop proud because of that. This virtue is there. This is the reality. Now I must see that I preserve it. I maintain it and I multiply it. Again examine your mind. And you find that you don't have this particular virtue or that particular virtue. Open all the gates of your mind. Welcome. This virtue which is not here should come in. Should come in. These are the four healthy exercises to make the mind healthy, strong. This is what you started doing in that. And the next, Samma Sati, awareness. Right type of awareness. What is right type of awareness? The awareness of the reality of this moment pertaining to your own physical and mental structure is the right type of awareness. Awareness cannot be of the past. The word sati has got two meanings. One meaning is a memory, which has nothing to do with this, this part of the mind. The memory is of the past. You keep on thinking of the past. This is not samma sati, this is not right awareness. Awareness cannot be of the future. You will be just thinking, you will be just imagining, you will be just dreaming, doesn't it? Awareness is real when you are with the awareness of the reality of this moment, as it has manifested itself from moment to moment, from moment to moment. And this reality must be pertaining to your own being. This mind, this matter, the combination of the two. This is what you started doing. You started observing your breath coming in, going out, from moment to moment, as it is. If it is deep, it is deep, if it is shallow, it is shallow. If it passes through left nostril, left nostril, right nostril, right nostril, both the nostrils, both the nostrils, just the reality as it is, as it is. Of course, for a new student, you are permitted, when you can't feel the breath, it has become very subtle, then you are permitted to take a few intentional breathings, conscious breathings, slightly hard breathings, but just a few. And you are again to come to the natural breath, normal breath, so that you make your capability, you develop your faculty to feel the subtlest breath very clearly, the softest breath very clearly, then you are with the reality as it is, not as you want it to be, but as it is, and that is called yatha ruta, as it is, from moment to moment as it is, you have been doing that. And another thing, the whole path takes you from very gross, gross, intensified, solidified, apparent reality, because that is what you experience initially, and then you move, move towards subtler, 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 subtler reality. Explore the entire field of this material structure, from the grossest reality to the subtlest reality. Explore the entire field of the mental structure, the mind, and the mental contents, from the grossest reality, surface level, and then subtler, subtler, subtlest reality. 
in the language of those days he said olariku from olariku to sukuma sukuma every step must be towards sukuma 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 subtlety 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 you cross the entire field of subtlety of mind and matter then you experience something which is beyond mind and matter the entire field of mind and matter you will notice in the field the things arise pass arise pass arise pass some change some change is taking place there is a constant flux a constant flow going on but when you cross this field nothing arises nothing passes this is something the eternal ultimate truth you can't imagine on the part of brahma nothing should be imagined and nothing should be accepted because the buddha said so or because your teacher says so you have to experience it and that experience will make you a totally changed person experience of that ultimate truth even for a few seconds turns one into a simple person actually and the entire path as you are moving from the gross reality towards the subtler subtler is a process of purification and you will understand as you proceed further on the path so one thing clear that you are moving from the gross reality towards the subtle reality but understand you can't create subtle reality you have to leave it to the dhamma you have to leave it to the nature and nature will keep on working so for you whatever manifests itself you are just aware of it initially you have to take few hard breaths and you are aware of it then naturally the breath becomes subtler and subtler softer and softer finer and finer you are aware of it now today whole day you are aware of the touch of the breath within this limited area you have chosen a small area the buddha wanted us to work with the small area because smaller the area the subtler the mind is bound to become more sensitive the mind is bound to become now small area tomorrow day after tomorrow you will have still smaller area now you work on the triangular area within this triangular area whole day you are working the touch of the breath touch of the breath anywhere on the inner walls of the nostrils touch of the breath anywhere on the outer rings of the nostrils touch of the breath anywhere on the area below the nostrils above the upper lip touch of the breath touch of the breath now tonight and tomorrow whole day you will experience something subtler than that as this touch was there all the time but you never cared to be aware of it because you never practiced now by practicing you made your mind sharper to feel this touch similarly there are subtler things which are there all the time but you never cared to be aware of it now this technique will help you and you will start feeling one thing one reality which will become very clear very evident you will notice that the breath that went in and when it came out it came out slightly warmer the temperature of the incoming breath and the outgoing breath differs the outgoing breath is slightly warmer this is good but you never care to be aware of it and this is natural the temperature of the outside atmosphere is lower than the temperature inside the body so this uh, breath from the outside atmosphere going in your body comes in contact with the warmer temperature there and comes out slightly warmer you notice that that the outgoing breath is slightly warmer than the incoming breath and then very soon you will start experiencing something more something some reality which has nothing to do with the breath you use the breath to move towards the subtler reality now even without using the breath what you have you have been working on this small area this triangular area by tonight by tomorrow you will start experiencing some biochemical reaction taking place some electromagnetic reaction which is taking place throughout the body throughout the physical structure every moment there is some biochemical reaction or the other some electromagnetic reaction or the other and because of that some sensation or the other throughout the body wherever there is life there is bound to be a sensation now in this way you will start feeling some sensation not necessarily this particular sensation or that particular sensation any sensation any sensation that crosses maybe heat 
to start filling heat in this area. Within this area only, heat, it can be body heat, it can be atmospheric heat. Heat, you just observe, there is heat at this moment, there is heat, that's all. Maybe cool, maybe perspiration, just observe, do nothing. Maybe an itching sensation, again just observe, an itching sensation. Don't react to it. An itching sensation, and you start reacting, you start rubbing it or scratching it. Then it is not Samma Sati. Samma Sati, just observe. Do nothing. Observe the reality which has manifested itself. And each in the start. Let me see how long it lasts. It becomes stronger, 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 but ultimately passes away. No itching is eternal. It is not going to stay forever. Let me see how long it lasts. Any sensation, not going to last forever. It arises sooner or later, passes away. It arises sooner or later, passes away. And you are just a silent witness of things that are happening. Maybe itching, maybe a prickling sensation. At times, maybe a prickling sensation. At times, maybe a throbbing sensation, a pulsing sensation. Maybe a sensation of lightness. Maybe a sensation of heaviness. Maybe pressure, maybe tension, maybe strain, maybe even pain. Maybe a sensation of expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Maybe a sensation of numbness. Maybe a sensation of dryness. Maybe a sensation of moisture. And you can't choose sensation. It's a choiceless observation. Let the nature play its own role. Let Dhamma play its own role. From moment to moment, whatever manifests itself, this is the reality of this moment and your job is just to accept it and observe it, observe it, without reacting to it, just observe, just observe, just observe. Don't look for something which is not there, otherwise you will get lost. Whatever comes up here, you accept it and observe. Quite possible that you may feel a sensation which you cannot name or label, not necessary to name or label. Even the sensations that you can name or label should not be named or labeled. So, something is happening and you are just observing it objectively without reacting to it. Our purpose is served. This is what the technique wants us to do. Just accept the reality of this moment as it is without reacting to it. So, any sensation. Maybe at times you don't feel any sensation. Sensation is there every moment on every little particle of the body. But your mind is very gross. So it can't feel subtle reality. So at times you don't feel anything within this limit. Then fall back to respiration. Your respiration all right. Keep on working with respiration, respiration. And suddenly a sensation crops up. Then start giving importance to the sensation that has cropped up. And remain with that sensation. The sensation passes away, some other sensation might crop up. That passes away, something else might crop up. Nothing crops up, again respiration. Either respiration or sensation, but give more importance to sensation. Quite possible at times, you may feel more than one sensation in this area. Two, three sensations at the same time. Don't get confused before that. Choose one, and choose which is subtlest. One which is very strong, you can feel it so easily, do that. One which is very feeble, give importance to the feeble one and try to feel the feebler one, feebler one, your mind will become more and more sensitive, more and more subtle to feel. Understand you have to keep your attention within this limited area, this will make your mind sharp and more sensitive. If you allow it to scatter throughout the body, then again it will remain very cross and it will feel only very cross sensations and you can't go to the depth as Buddha wanted you to go to the depth. So while you are here, something might start on other parts of the body. You can't stop it. Never try to stop it. But ignore it. Don't give it any input. Something is happening somewhere. My job is to explore the reality of this area, this triangular area. If anything happening on the inner walls of the nostrils, any sensation crops up, I will observe. Any sensation crops up on the outer walls of the nostrils, yes, I will observe. Any sensation crops up on the outer rings of the nostrils, yes, I will observe. Any sensation crops up on the area below the nostrils, above the upper lip, yes, I will observe. But anything beyond that, 
I will admit. Then you will find your mind is limited to a small area and working on a small area it becomes sharper and sharper, sharper and sharper. Work this night and then tomorrow whole day. This is Samma Sati. And the next is Samma Samadhi. Now Samadhi is concentration of the mind. But Samma Samadhi is different. With the base, wholesome base. And what is wholesome base? Free from moha. The other day we talk moha. Ignorance. No illusion. No delusion. No hallucination. No confusion. And no imagination. The object of your concentration should be real. Whatever you are practicing as Samma Sati, awareness of the reality of this moment, the reality of this moment that you are experiencing within this limited area, now this reality and your awareness of this reality, this moment, next moment again you are aware of the reality, next moment again you are aware of the reality, like this from moment to moment, from moment to moment, from moment to moment, without any Without any disturbance, if you keep on observing the reality from moment to moment, this may change, this sensation or that sensation. But you are within this area and the reality that is manifesting here from moment to moment, from moment to moment, how long you continue to be aware without any interruption, that much is your samadhi stronger and stronger. And it is samma, right, because you are with the reality that you experience. No imagination is involved. A mind can get concentrated with an imaginary object, a shape or form of this uh, god or that god, this goddess or that goddess, founder of this religion or that religion. You can imagine the shape or form of this face of this person, keep on repeating it, this imagination mentally, mentally your mind gets concentrated. Or you keep on working with the word, keep on repeating it, verbalization, verbalization, mind gets concentrated. This is not the natural reality. You see, the Shira that you practice is to take you to the second step of Samadhi. <coughs> and the Samadhi that you are practicing is to take you to the third step of Anya. It is all progressive, moving towards the final goal. So if you take any other object, which is either imaginary or it is your own creation, you impose something which is not clear, then it will not take you to the final goal. So, Object should be whatever comes up within this area and you are aware, you are just aware. Moment to moment, moment to moment, you are aware, you are aware, you are aware. How long you are aware continuously, keeping the attention within this limited area is Samma Samadhi. Otherwise mind can get concentrated with as I said ignorance, this imaginary object or with the base of grief, raga or with the base of aversion, dosha. You would have seen a hunter fully concentrated on his double barrel gun, a prey coming and he will shoot and kill. Concentration is there. But this is not Samma Samadhi. A cat standing near the mouse hole, fully concentrated. The mouse comes out and jumps and devours it. Fully concentrated, not Samma Samadhi. Every unwholesome physical action or vocal action is done with some, some amount of samadhi concentration. Even a pickpocket picks your pocket. Mind is concentrated, very aware what he is doing, what he is doing. This is not some samadhi. It must be free from craving, free from aversion. When you were observing your breath, you were free from moha, ignorance. The truth that you are experiencing, there is no confusion about it. The breath is there. The touch of the breath, yes, the touch of the breath is there. And now these sensations, the sensations are there. And you are observing. And you are not observing with craving or with aversion. As with the breath, there was no craving, no aversion. Similarly, with the touch, there was no craving, no aversion. Similarly, now the sensations that you are experiencing here, no craving, no aversion. Things are just happening. And you are observing objectively. Objectively, this makes the samadhi, samma samadhi. And this helps you to move to the next field, the third field of Panya. That is wisdom, that is insight, which will purify the mind, not merely at the surface level. Srila takes you to Samadhi, where you develop mastery over the mind. 
but this mask over the mind is at the surface level, slightly deeper, and Panya takes you to the depth of the mind. And at the deepest level, the third part of Dhamma is to purify the mind at the deepest level, the so-called unconscious level, the source of your middle, from where all these impurities arise, originate and they multiply. The stock of your past impurities that you accumulated, all of them have to come up on the surface and pass, come up on the surface and pass. That will be Panya. We won't discuss about it today, we'll discuss tomorrow. Because day after tomorrow you are entering the field of Panya. Theory and practice will go to it. So tomorrow we discuss about Panya so that you practice day after tomorrow. Now you are in the field of Sila. You are observing all the precepts that you have taken very meticulously, very scrupulously. And you are practicing your Samadhi, awareness of the reality within this limited area from moment to moment, from moment to moment. Make use of the time. Make use of the opportunity with a good base of sila living in this environment. In a tent, a meditation tent like this, there is no reason, there is no uh, reason that you should break any of the sila. And you've got all the tranquility, the calm, calmness, the good atmosphere around you where you can work. Work with your samadhi. Make use of this. The time is very important. The opportunity that you have got is so good for you. The facility that you have got here. And the wonderful hum, the wonderful technique, the known sectarian universal technique. So rational, so scientific. Make use of it. Make use of it for your own good, for your own benefit, for your own liberation. Liberation from all the bondages, the shackles, the chains of ignorance, of craving, of aversion. And to come out of all the misery and enjoy real peace, real harmony, real happiness. May all of you enjoy real peace, real harmony, real happiness, real happiness. Take rest for about five minutes and then start working again. Take rest for about five minutes. third day is over, you have seven more left to work. Tomorrow, the fourth day, is a very important day for you. You will start practicing the Pashtana. That means you will start Entering the field of fun, this one inside. Whatever you practice for these three days, 
was a very important prerequisite for your work tomorrow. The actual work starts tomorrow. These three days you were preparing yourself to start the actual work of the Pashtuna meditation. Without strong sila, it is not possible to practice Vipassana, not possible to get the results, proper results of Vipassana. Without good samadhi, it is not possible to practice Vipassana. Therefore, these three days, you are observing your five precepts, the sila that you have taken in the first day. This was the foundation. Stronger the foundation, the stronger the building will be on the foundation. So with a strong foundation you started working with Samadhi, practicing Anatana. Sheila is necessary to have right type of Samadhi. Even 25 centuries back in India, and so also to some extent even today. There were teachers, there are teachers who give no importance to Sheila. They are not necessary. You do whatever you like, whatever you feel pleasantly. Carry on. But still you can meditate and get all the pleasant experiences of meditation. The aim is to get some pleasant experience of meditation. But Vipassana is not for that. Vipassana is to get the mind purified, purified at the deep, deepest level, at the root level, for which not ordinary samadhi, but samma samadhi, the right type of samadhi. So perfect sila is necessary for right type of samadhi and right type of samadhi is necessary to develop panya. And panya is necessary to reach the final goal of full liberation, full enlightenment. Sila for samadhi, samadhi for panya, panya for vimutti, that is liberation. This is just when you start the work, but as you proceed, you find all three of them, Sila, Samadhi, Panya, they start helping each other. It's like a tripod with three legs. Even if one is weak, it comes down. All three must be strong. Sila will help, Samadhi will help Panya. Samadhi will help, Sila will help Panya. Panya will help, Sila will help, Samadhi. All three are interlinked and they start helping each other. If one is perfect in Sila, good. It gives its own benefit, good results. But merely having perfection in Sila alone cannot take one to the final goal of full liberation. One is perfect in Srila and has very deep experience of Samadhi. Yes, this also cannot take to the goal of full liberation. Panya is necessary. This person who became fully enlightened, Siddhartha Gautama, his life was full of Srila even from the young age, childhood age. And then he practiced Samadhi, living the householder's life, he went to different teachers. The highest Samadhi of those days, eight absorption in Samadhi, he practiced all that. And yet he found that he is not fully liberated. Because he noticed at the depths of the mind, there are sleeping disciples which are like sleeping volcanoes. So long as these volcanoes are there, they can erect any time. 
will overpower you. And again you will be still at me. Roots have to be taken out. Roots of impurities of the depth of the mind has to be taken out. And for that, he continued his search and rediscovered this technique of Krishna. This is only, only by practicing reflection he could develop his panya and become enlightened person. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. Vipassana was lost to the country. Talk of spirit. Panya was lost to the country in its perfection. He rediscovered that. Three parts of Dhamma, the Eightfold Noble Path and Sila, it was there. Three parts of Samadhi, the full path, they are there. Now another two parts which come under Panya, that is Samma, Sankattu, Samma, Dutti, Samma, Sankattu, right side of path. When someone comes to a course like this, initially, at the surface level of the mind, there are certain impurities which keep from very agitated. Some impact in the mind of some incident. And then one starts observing the respiration, the thoughts become very predominant, and many a times the thoughts are full of defilement. In some cases there might be anger, in some cases hatred, in some cases lot of sadness, depression. In some cases, maybe passion. These thoughts keep on overpowering. And you try your best to come back to respiration. Thoughts keep on overpowering you, come to respiration. One day, two days, three days, you find. Not that all the thoughts are going away. But the pattern of this thought has changed. It is not as violent as it was before. Thoughts are still there. But now thoughts are mostly <coughs> pertaining to Dhamma, <coughs> pertaining to the path. One starts understanding what the path is, how I should meditate, what is the proper way of meditation, what are the difficulties, all that keep coming in the mind. Not the thoughts of harming someone. This is Samma Sankar. It is not the right type of panya which made him fully alive. Good thoughts were there in the teaching of all the teachers of India <coughs> before him, contemporary to him, and after him. A good thought. They are necessary. Then you can see things properly. And that is Samma Dikti, right understanding, right view. You can see things properly as they are. Like uh, the sun is covered with very dark clouds, black, thick clouds, and you don't see the light, it's all dark. Some layers of these clouds go away. Clouds are thin there, but they are not so thick, not so dark, they are thin. Light, you start seeing light, although all are not going. That is necessary. This type of Samma Sankapa thoughts are still there. You have not reached the stage where the mind has become free from thinking, free from thought. It is there. But it is not that disturbance which won't allow you to take the next step. And the next step is Samma Sankapa, the right understanding, understanding of the reality as it is. And this is the real time. So there are three stages of Panya, this thing. Progressively, one moves towards the Panya which will liberate. Three types of Panya, 
in the language of those three it was called sutta maya panya the next chinta maya panya and the third bhavana maya panya sutta maya panya you heard something you read something wisdom of somebody else a wise person an enlightened person a saintly person speaks words of dhamma they come in scriptures you listen directly from this person or you read scriptures and you accept it you accept it most of the time because you have got great faith and devotion in this person or you have got great faith and devotion in the scripture particular scripture and you accept it good very helpful <coughs> those who have never heard anything about dhamma those who have never heard anything about the truth they remain confused the whole life at least one has heard about dhamma has listened to dhamma listened to the right thing but this is not done just by developing sutamaya panya the wisdom that one heard from somebody read somewhere and it will be very good it is very good very good in the sense that it will give you inspiration it will give you guidance to take the next step and the next step is chintamaya panya which means understanding the truth developing the wisdom at the intellectual level to the being to the rational He is not supposed to accept things blindly. <coughs> he must use his intellect, his reasoning. Whatever I have heard, whatever I have read, is logical. It is pragmatic. So I accept it. At the intellectual level, one tries to understand it, and one finds at the intellectual level, yes, it is quite logical, quite scientific, quite acceptable, and one accepts it. the second step of panya very important step very helpful helpful in the sense again you get inspiration and you get a direction to move towards the third step which is bhavana bhav is to happen to live your own wisdom now your experience direct experience you live that wisdom and this alone will liberate you the first two will be helpful to you but they cannot be there the first two were there in india at that time the discovery of buddha was to stir experience it. they were all the talk there they were teachers <coughs> who will say keep yourself away from craving keep yourself away from aversion all the sense objects illusionary delusionary and you keep on getting attached to them you can get misery for yourself come out of this attachment become detached and you come out of misery all those teachings were there how to come unless one has developed bhavana maya panya the wisdom the direct action to start helping one to come out of the misery first and the second can be very helpful can be very harmful also many a times they become very harmful Like Sukhmaya Panya, someone is born in a particular family, brought up in a particular society, having faith in a particular tradition, particular scripture, belief. From the young age, one gets the mind condition, 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 with all those acceptances, all those philosophies, beliefs, dogmas. 
and one starts feeling that this is perfectly all right. All other traditions are useless. They are not correct. My tradition, this is the best. I accept it. One does not take the next step at all. One feels perfectly satisfied. I have accepted the truth. The truth that our scripture says, the truth that the saints have said, the truth that the founder of our religion has said is wonderful. That becomes a great value to bond with. Such person will never use the intellect, will never try to reason for his own thought. Far away to develop one's own ability to experience it is far away. It becomes a big bondage. If someone who is convinced with the Sukhamaya Panya and yet being a human being, a human species, wants to reason out and starts reasoning, is it true? Is it correct? Is it acceptable? Is it pragmatic? Then the elders get worried. The elders of the family, the elders of the society, the elders of this particular community, they don't like it. They say, oh, you don't have belief. You don't have faith in our scriptures. You don't have faith in the founder of our religion. If you doubt, you know what the result will be? Yo, what's After up? Death, it's organic meditation art video. Finishing up. It's and it's I think it looks government. pretty awesome. Thanks I don't like to go to the out. head. Uh, I accept reasonable or unreasonable, pragmatic Please. or non-pragmatic, anything. I accept. I don't want to go to the head. The poor fellow, he accepts it. Accepts it out of fear. Same very elders. They go another way. They will say, look, 